Welcome to this tutorial on audio cables. Most cables consist of an outer protective insulation layer and one or two inner cores, each with their own insulation and a surrounding braided earth core shield. Between them, these cores carry the live return and earth signals. The cores can be of different thicknesses or weights and made from metals with a variety of electrical properties. The properties of these metals are expressed in terms such as resistance and capacitance and each are suitable for different types of leads. For example, despite using the same type of connectors, each lead in these pairs requires a different type of cable. Analog phono to phono and spdif coaxial leads, each employing a different type of cable with a single inner core and surrounding earth shield. Mic and AES3 leads, again each employing a different type of cable with live and return inner cores and a surrounding earth shield. And guitar and head amp to cab cables, again each employing a different type of cable with a single inner core and surrounding earth shield. Each core in a cable must be electrically isolated to ensure they do not touch. If there is more than one core, each will be separated by its own individually identified insulation covering. Many cables braid the earth core shield around the inner live and return cores. This helps it to protect the cores against external interference and drain it away to ground. A collection of cables gathered together, perhaps with a cable tie or in the form of a multi-core, is known as a wiring loom. Looms are often created to link a single multi-channel piece of equipment or a rack of equipment to another device or a patch bay. An example would be to connect a stage box to a patch bay. Maximum cable length is usually limited to between a few metres and a few tens of metres for analogue electrical, digital electrical and optical signals, although this is not usually a problem for the home or project studio. If audio is to be sent greater distances, other formats such as MADI or audio over IP can be used. When referring to cables, it is usual to refer to their weight. A thin cable is referred to as light gauge and a thick cable as heavy. The weight of the metal in the cores does not always affect the quality of the signal passing along it. Provided the electrical properties are correct, decisions about weight are more likely to be informed by ergonomics. For example, because of space limitations, it is common to specify very light gauged installation cable for looms when wiring a patch bay to a mixing desk, but the same cable would not be used for making patch cores. A heavier gauge and more robust cable would be needed to survive the constant flexing, plugging and unplugging. Here are some examples of typical cable gauges used for leads. Balanced installation cable, light. Mic cable, heavy durable designed for constant flexing. Unbalanced line level cable, medium. Guitar cable, heavy durable designed for constant flexing. Speaker cable, heavy. Multicore, contains multiple light gauge balanced installation cables. BNC word clock, heavy. Spdif coaxial, medium and optical, very thin and delicate. Sales literature about cables may also include details of thickness of insulation layers, overall diameter and the number of strands in each core. The electrical properties of cables are expressed in terms such as capacitance and resistance. For many applications, it is essential that the correct type of cable is used. For example, speaker cab leads, spdif coaxial leads and balanced installation leads all require very different types of cable. However, 
It is no longer necessary for home and project studio owners to understand cable theory in depth. We can simply use a specialist supplier who will identify the cables they sell in terms of their uses. So for example, we can buy a cable identified in a catalogue as being suitable for installation looms, mic leads or AES leads, safe in the knowledge that they will be correct for the job at hand. A coaxial cable is one in which a single insulated inner core is surrounded by a braided earth core. The term is often used in the context of digital electrical signal connection, such as an SBDIF coaxial lead or a BNC coaxial lead. The script for this tutorial, with accompanying screenshots, can be found at projectstudiohandbook.com. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or at the website to get instant notification of new videos as they are uploaded. And please do click on the ads of interest to you. We're a free resource and they help to pay our costs. Thanks very much for watching.